Green Roof Geese It was spring, and I was slowly growing taller. Ever since I woke up in November, there was noise all around me. But for the last two weeks of March, the middle school was quiet. No kids. No yelling or laughter. No one bothering me or my tulip friends. Just the way I liked it. The roof was finally empty. Then I heard a loud sound. Honk, honk! Ugh, what is going on out there? I looked around my pot, but all I saw was dirt. Honk, honk! I knew this sound. A goose was near the green roof. I shouted, stay away from me! It landed anyway. You are not going to have me for dinner. A goose once nibbled on my bulb, and I didn't bloom that year. It sounded like a goose was eating everything on the green roof. Crunch, crunch. I was sure that I was next. The bugs in my planter always chewed on my leaves, but at least they were small. This goose sounded huge. I could hear the goose breaking sticks and munching on plants. I said, When those onions grow, this whole place will stink. You better get out while you can. I still heard chewing, so I tried something more creative. There are big monsters that live under the grass here. You seriously don't want to stay. This continued for days. Whatever I said, the goose still wouldn't leave me alone. Eventually, I grew tall enough that I was able to see more. I was right, but it wasn't just one goose. It was a pair of geese. Are you kidding me? I said out loud. My friends were still too far down in their pots to be worried. I noticed a mound of twigs and plants nearby. A nest? Oh no, I moaned. A nest meant more geese. Of course, without water and food, those baby geese would die. It hadn't rained for days. The last thing I wanted was to hear mother goose and gander goose crying all night long because they weren't smart enough to make a nest on the ground. When mother goose was near my paw, I yelled, You need to leave. Can't you see there's no water on this roof? Hey, don't turn your back on me. Where are you going? She walked away from my pot and over to her nest. The next thing I knew, a large egg appeared. Boop. It took her three days to lay two eggs. Boop. By the end of the week, there were four. Boop, boop. We've got a big problem, I complained to my friends. I saw Mother Goose sit on her eggs in the sun, in the cold and in the rain. When she flew away to get food each day, she covered the eggs with feathers. Gander Goose, the father, watched over the nest when she was gone. Unfortunately, they were never gone long. Four weeks of sitting went by before I saw a crack in an egg. There was a hole. Then there was a bigger crack in a bigger hole. Peck, peck. The gosling's beak poked out, and then its head. And then he tried to get back in. But the shell broke apart. I called him Dresden. I whispered to my friends, I'm going to give them names, but it does not mean I like them. Next, another gosling appeared. She was fluffy and yellow, and she had big feet like a duck. So I decided to call her Duxbury. Chirp, chirp, chirp. Homestead was born third. He didn't want to leave the nest. What a baby. Blake was born last, and she was fearless, just like me. Her brothers and sister followed her everywhere. While all of this hatching was happening, I began to bloom. I was finally tall enough to see the entire green roof, which was no longer green. Mother Goose and Gander Goose had eaten almost all of the plants. Well, now I know where they get the phrase silly goose from, I said to the tulips. Mother Goose walked over to a large container. She looked up at the pot. She looked down at the goslings. She looked up at the pot again. They were not going to reach that food any time soon. She looked around and waddled over to the middle of the green roof. Her youngsters followed her and found some shoots of grass hiding in the succulents. There was not enough food for six geese. I saw a door open and a tall man came near us. The geese froze. He took out a phone. When I realized that he was taking pictures of me, I started to pose. A minute later, he was gone. Then I saw him looking through the window. He was staring with shock at the geese. 
Great, I said. Maybe you'll help us get rid of these geese who moved in without permission. We had two hot days in a row after the goslings were discovered, and there was no water anywhere. Mother Goose and Gander Goose were getting frantic. They honked and honked at the goslings, trying to get them to fly up and off the roof. These parents have no idea what they're doing, I said to the tulips. Even I know goslings can't fly until they're at least two months old. These silly geese are going to die if we don't help them. We have to attract attention. It's time to bloom. The next morning, I woke up to another hot, dry day. The goslings did not look good. They were in a pile in the shade, and they didn't move much. Then I looked at the other tulips, and noticed they had all bloomed. Tulips listen. Geese don't. We are so much smarter than they are. My friends were taller and more beautiful than I had ever seen them. Now we just had to wait and hope that someone would see us through the windows and want to get closer. Sure enough, a group of people showed up a few days later with a container of water and some grass. They all had masks on, which made them look like very large geese. It was funny. Visitors continued to come every few days, and I continued to watch the annoying geese. I found myself thinking, the parents are loud and eat too much, but the goslings are kind of cute. One day, when the water container was empty, Blake wandered around and headed towards the greenhouse. The greenhouse was scary. It made loud noises when the wind blew, and part of the roof was missing. Blake didn't care. She went under the benches that were in the doorway, and the other goslings followed her. Then she waddled on top of the roof pieces that had fallen to the ground. She plopped down and started drinking the rainwater that had collected in a plastic tile. Then Duxbury started to drink. Slurp, slurp. Then Dresden and Homestead started to drink. Maybe some geese are smart. A few days later, a man put a blue pool on the roof. It had a ramp of sand on the outside and rocks on the inside. The geese were going to have fun in that. The people who visited also put a tarp over the bench, so the goslings had a dry place to hide during storms. Every time visitors showed up, they smiled, filled up the food, cleaned out the water containers, and took pictures of the geese. Click, click. And of course, they took pictures of us, the tulips. I'm famous, I thought. They must know I saved the goslings. Gander Goose was always high up on the roof, hissing and honking when people got too close. However, Mother Goose seemed relaxed after a while. One day, a visitor spread something around the green roof. I didn't know what it was until she got close. Grass seeds, I said. Oh no, I thought, they're never going to leave now. These crazy people actually like the geese, I whispered to my friends. I watched the geese every day for three months. Blake explored every inch of the green roof. Dresden loved to hide under benches, behind pots, and even behind his parents. Homestead wrapped his neck around anyone nearby for a quick snuggle. And Duxbury loved the water. She played in the pool, she dumped her head in puddles, and she played in the rain. I thought back to when I heard the first honk honk. I didn't sleep for days because I was so terrified. Now I see them learning to fly and becoming independent. Soon they'll be ready to start their new adventures as a flock. Soon they will be gone, and I will be sad, because I will have the empty space I thought I wanted.